I think we've covered what really causes non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, and it's not environmental. It's the cell replication. We know that for the small numbers of those lymphomas that might be caused by something else, that something else can't be Roundup because of the vast weight of epidemiological studies and the people who have reviewed it, and in particular the study of the tens of thousands of people. But we can also talk now, I think specifically, about Mr. McCausland's cancer and his experience. And needless to say, nobody would have wanted to have gone through what I'm sure that he and his family went through. Well, one question I had, and I think you might have, is, well, what was his exposure to Roundup? Is it something that's supremely unusual at his house or not? He talks about it. I think he'll tell us, and I'm sure uh, he's telling it honestly here, and he'll tell it honestly there to you. He talks about his routine. He says he would, in the yard, walk around, look for a weed. When I see the weed, I'd spray it. Walk around, look for the next weed, and spray it. And that the time that he was spending with Roundup, it wasn't actually constant spraying. It was rather some spraying in the flower beds and then walking around the yard and doing it just like we would all do it normally. Well, was he not wearing shoes? Was he not wearing a shirt? Was he not doing something else that could have caused more exposure to the skin? We asked him, what, do you, what did you typically wear when you were spraying Roundup? Jeans a shirt, short sleeve shirt, tennis shoes or work boots, and work boots 90% of the time. So he wasn't getting some unusual exposure through that. When he sprayed, he explained that he didn't want it in the air and didn't want it to hit plants that he didn't want to kill. And then when he was spraying weeds, he was literally spraying them two to four inches above the ground. So it's not like it's misting out there or doing anything like that. And we talked to him about getting Roundup on his skin. Does he remember that in some way? And he described a situation where in the old days, and he says this ended no later than 2004, we had a system where you could pump the Roundup to pressurize it so you could use the wand. You guys have, I'm sure, probably seen something like that. And he said during that period of time, he would get some, he says maybe a tablespoon, on his hands during that period of time and under those circumstances, but that at no other times does he ever recall getting around up on his skin. So it's not an unusual exposure in that way. And he testified flat out that he doesn't recall ever breathing in the Roundup. And he said that when he finished spraying, he would wash his hands with soap and water, and he would spend a minute washing his hands with soap and water typically. So once again, we're not looking at an unusual exposure either in terms of time that he spent because he's walking in the yard quite a bit or in skin exposure or in anything else like that. 